This episode of PDX Spotlight is brought to you in association with Portland Radio Project. Hi, we're Floater. You're watching PDX Spotlight.
Welcome to PDX Spotlight. I'm your host, Luke Neal, and today we are coming to you from the Star Theater with the one and only Floater. Guys, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. You've had an exciting 2018. The Thief has been extremely well received by fans. I want to talk about that, but let's step back a little bit to last year, 2017, and the induction to the Hall, Oregon Music Hall of Fame. Can you talk to us about what that meant to you? I, I really did not see it coming. It was a total, total shock. Uh, and I, I don't know. I don't know that I ever, I still haven't completely wrapped my head around it. So ask me next year. <laughs> is it amazing, I guess, is a good, yeah. yeah, humbling. Flattering. Very flattering, yeah. 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 Well, you've got obviously a legacy in Oregon and beyond, and uh, people were excited when they heard that new music was coming out from Floater. Let's talk about the inspiration for The Thief. Uh, it's an 11-track LP. Uh, where did you record this thing? Production, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. Um, so we recorded and mixed uh, the whole thing uh, in my house. <laughs> and uh, the... The writing process really um, came from, uh, this happens a lot with a lot of our records, which is that um, as a couple of the songs are coming together, uh, I will notice a, a kind of uh, musical and or lyrical theme. Mm -hmm. um, and then that theme will start to guide the the writing and the production of the subsequent songs, um, and it's it feels a little bit you know uh, when I, like with Alter it was kind of uh, we only had a couple of the songs, uh, but but they were very much about the sort of process of change, and so uh, we started trying to create more with this change focus and knowing that that was going to be the overarching kind of feel, and then. Um, with the thief, uh, there was j it was just so much loss, um, and it, it. I think a lot of it was that you know, 2015, 2016, it felt like a lot of, uh, a lot of loss, a lot of um, that feeling of kind of decay and helplessness, and um, and the more we explored everything around that the harder, it, it, it got very hard to put a face or a name or a word to what exactly um, the feeling was. And I think at one point I kind of mentioned, it just, it, you know, you feel as you're, as you're aging and you're, you know, you're watching your parents get old and, you know, it feels as if everything is being stolen from you. Like you can't, you know, like that feeling when you walk outside and your car window's smashed in and, or your bike's gone or whatever and you just feel like, ah. Uh. And uh, so it became, well, okay, who is the thief? You never know, right? You, and, and I think that was the, that kind of conversation was the, the seed that it started really growing from. What were some of the early songs that dictated the direction of the record? Well, the, the title track, um, was one of the first ones that really started to come together um, and you know we, we knew early on that it was really long um, because we had already kind of composed a, a bunch of these movements that sort of went from one into the next and we were like fuck another you know like why why do we always have to make these songs that are like eight and a half minimum you know <laughs> and uh but you know, it just, it had to be, it had, it was, it was like, well, that's the way it is. It's, it's, you know, it's almost 10 minutes long, but we didn't want to cut any of it. And it all felt like it was where it was supposed to be. Um, and you know, when you know you have a, a finished song that you really love and you know is going to be on the record and it's 10 minutes long, it's hard not to have it be, it, it walks in the room of all the other songs and it sort of bullies them around a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah.
How has the reception from the fans been sharing this new music and new material with everybody? Oh man, uh, really good. Re uh, really w much, much better than I ever could have hoped or expected or, uh, yeah, it's, it's been uh, humbling, yeah. Um, and it's great because, you know, we, we've been around for a while, we've put out a lot of records and um, I, none of them are ever really very similar to the ones before um, and not necessarily by design I think we just get uh, antsy and mm -hmm. you know um, get kind of like itchy feet and just want to go into new territory um, and it uh, it definitely has the uh, not intentionally it's very profoundly radio unfriendly. Um, I mean, like the tracks never stop. It sort of just starts and goes all the way through. Um, and there was just no, uh, I don't think that we ever factored in um, track separation, like for playlists and shuffle and stuff like that. It's, it's really made to be played from start to finish. Um, and I think if you, if you're okay with the idea of stuff just kind of starting suddenly and then ending suddenly, then it, then that works. But our focus has never really hit single. No. So yeah, it's no. it's good songwriting. That's it goes by quick. 
for songs that are usually five plus for the shorter, you know, side on yeah. the thief. Yeah. For eleven tracks, I mean, it flies by. It is because oh, it is you. so well connected and so well written. You know, bands evolve, music evolves, and it just, you know, you never know what an artist is going to put out that may reflect what they're listening to or what they've been doing with time off. And uh, to see the thief come out and do what it's done is really great. Well, let's talk about, for the gearheads out there, the sound of the record. I think it's really interesting the approach you took sonically. It's tight and uh, in some ways obviously there's the cinematic effect, there's the huge ambiance, but the way you transition the listener between those intimate moments to these big crescendos is really incredible. But uh, to get that sonic depth, were you listening to anything or particularly inspired by anything when you were putting the record together? Um, well, I, I guess what I would say was probably the, um, <laughs> the factor that shaped it the most. So I was working for almost two years on my solo album that I put out right before that, Brave the Strange, and we, Mark and I worked together, and, and Dave, uh, we worked on that for a really long time uh, with Daniel Riddle of King Black Acid, and, um, and he's a very uh, wide, he, he, he really likes to produce and mix in a very, very wide stereo field. And um, that was a big part of the influence. And then I would say the other thing that probably was equally huge was kind of isolation. Uh, there's something about, you know, when you're working in your own home uh, and it's all you do, you get really, really sort of myopic and you get this kind of, uh, I kind of shut myself off from the whole rest of the world. I really wasn't listening to anything. Um, I, I was almost deliberately uh, just reading and listening to podcasts, but not a lot of music because I kind of wanted to just live in the world of this record. And so, um, you know, things like like, uh, like a landslide, uh, you know, we originally had the song as a song, and then, um, you know, I really wanted to, I, I kept saying, I feel like we're, we're not setting the stage for this song enough. It's not, you know, it, the experience of going into it, it's too abrupt, and it needs to get, it needs to breathe more, and, it, and so the, kind of working on, like, how do we bring these sounds in, and then, you know, Dave would make weird guitar noises, and we'd put a bunch of reverb on it, and um, you know, I think once you kind of make a world of the album and then you just live on that world and you don't go explore, uh, it, it starts to shape itself that way. Yeah, Like a Landslide's a perfect example. Like I would say to anybody who's listening to this record, throw on some headphones because it's <laughs> well worth the journey. And that, that opening minute 30 to two minutes of Like a Landslide really sets a tone for that track. It's fantastic. <laughs>
Recently you returned from Europe, uh, you and Mark did some duo shows over there. Uh, they're kind of, as I understand, a split between your solo work and Floater. Can you talk about those experiences? Uh, yeah, so we did uh, a, a number of shows in uh, Iceland and Italy, and um, and I, it was great. It was really, really fun. I mean, uh, I didn't really know what to expect going into it, but it ended up being a lot more fun than I could have ever imagined. Um, yeah, we had we had a blast and uh, met a lot of people. <laughs> oddly, a lot of people in both places um, that were already fans mm -hmm. that you know were like, "Oh my god!" And you know, it was a very acoustic kind of unplugged, just sort of because um, I, I originally actually thought that I was doing all of these dates solo with an acoustic <laughs> guitar, and then Mark ended up being able to come along and join me on them, and so. We you know we'd get a drum kit and kind of liven it up a little bit, make it a little bit more fun. But uh, yeah, it, it was great. I, I hope we can do it again. Yeah, super fun. So you went from that the two piece kind of stripped down acoustic thing, then you come back stateside. You're playing huge shows. You just played a festival last weekend. Yeah. How how do you shift gears and do that? You know, as a, <laughs> that's pretty jarring. Yeah, because adding this guy is like adding ten more people. Right. On exactly. Yeah. Power. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know, it's, that's a good term. It does feel a little bit like shifting gears, but you know, like if you drive a manual, you don't really think about shifting gears, you just kind of do it. 
you know. Um, I don't know. It just feels like playing a show. You know? Yeah, I, I really enjoy taking any given material, so a given song, for example, or a set or whatever, and being able to explore playing that in completely different contexts, you know, different gear setups, different audience and room sizes and things like that. And it's really fun getting to take some of these songs and play a tiny little room, two of us super acoustic, and then turn around and do the exact same song on a big stage, full on electric, you know, With the entire band just rocking out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's really fun. It's just a completely different experience, I think, not only for the audience, but also for us, for sure. Yeah. You get to kind of explore a song a little bit. Um, so at one of the nice outcomes sometimes of touring on the road, especially for songwriters, you get material, you get inspired. Have you yeah. been writing anything? Uh, always. Yeah. 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 What I is your process? Should stop. Are, are you a, a <laughs> lyric guy first or a music guy first? I don't, you know, I wish that I had a, uh, like a recipe, um, because it would be honestly just so much easier if I, if I just had kind of a, this is how it works. Um, I, I never have, I've never been able to, uh, fit it into a shape. It's, mm. I don't know, sometimes, um, sometimes it's one line that just sticks in my craw and, you know, two or three years will go by where I'm like, I can't figure out what to do with this one line. And then it'll just all fall into place very quickly. Um, sometimes it's, you know, I have no idea. We just, we'll get together and just jam and out of something kind of fun, you know, it'll be like, that's a really cool groove. It should, I'll, I'll think of some vocals for it. Um, sometimes I have just the chorus, but I have no, you know, what, how would this work for the verse? And then he'll throw some chords and look, like, okay, that's cool. And, um, I don't know. We've just never really, never nailed yeah, down a, uh, this is how it works. <laughs> that's great. I think maybe the, if we were going to say this is how it works, it would be everybody tries really hard to just get out of the way of it working. Hmm. You know, you don't want to, I mean, if, if, if you come in and go, here's the whole song. Cool. If you come in and you go, I don't know what to do, but I have this one, it's like just this little snippet of melody and I like, and it's in D minor and what do we, you know, and everybody kind of gets behind you and says, okay, well, let's find a way to, you know, as long as nobody's getting in the way of the song, it'll kind of make itself, you know. You are currently enjoying the success of The Thief and the fan reception and the tour. Uh, but what's on the horizon for you? Maybe new music? What's going down in 2019? Uh, I am um, leaving in uh, 16 hours. <laughs> Uh, back overseas and doing solo acoustic shows uh, in a bunch of different countries until the summer of 2019. So uh, what's in the future for us in the immediate future is a whole lot of working with each other remotely. <laughs> so we're using uh, yeah, yeah, yeah we're using some apps uh, where you get to a lot of Dropbox, a lot of sending stuff back and forth. Um, you know, and I mean, I guess that's kind of how people do it now, because it's certainly how we're doing it now. Um, but just a lot of, uh, you know, file sharing and then uh, see where that leads. Well, tell the fans and new fans where they can find you online and get your material. Probably the fastest and easiest and most memorable thing is just floater.com. That's, and there's links to everything on there. You can go to robwinia.com, you can go to everything off of that. Yeah. All our Facebooks are on there and everything. So. Right on. Well, we're getting rained on. <laughs> know, we are yeah. in Portland. It's kind of the perfect time to wrap yeah. up. So I want to thank you again for being on the show. Oh, man. So, thank, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, floater.
Don't know how much more I can say yeah. It's always my mistake And I'll be sorry when I break you yeah. I'm on the fucking 